Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the WGLNA. I'm Joshua Gray, joined by Randall Holcomb. I'd like to remind everybody to please follow us on Twitter at WGLNA, Facebook.com slash WGLNA, and use that hashtag WGLNA so we can find your tweets and put them up on the broadcast. And don't forget about the question of the day. Who are you going to be looking forward to being in that final match tomorrow? Who will be joining us in the Gold League and who's going to be there as that last stepping stone for them? I think Volt earned a lot of fans in that last series, and we'll see a lot of people probably putting them up on their social media pages as they will compete tomorrow. You want to place your bets right before every single battle. All you have to do is follow the syntax and the information that's provided in the Twitch chat. If you're not into betting, that's fine. You can watch this full screen. But the top performers, the top 50 performers when it comes to points, will have a chance to take home a Jinx code good for $50. Now, Black Friday is around the corner. And if you're looking for one of those gifts for somebody that loves tanks, loves video games, or loves the WGLNA or esports, Jinx is definitely one of the places to go. You can go to jinx.com and click on the World of Tanks symbol there. Let's go ahead and check out the rosters for these two teams, Randall. Yes, I want to look at Doge Squad first. You can see a number of names that we recognize. Cod in charge. We've got everyone else that you should know from last qualifier. Very minor changes. Replacements, you're going to see names that you recognize from a just a myriad of teams together on this new team. Let's see if they can make it, see if they can compete. And the first battle will take place on Himmelsdorf. What do we have for tanks? Looks like we have the replacements. The blue team defending will be bringing two 5100s, three IS-3s, an IS, and a T-29. Good full lineup. I like it. Doge squad, two 5100s, three IS-3s, a KV-3, and a Tiger-1, that KV-3 chosen, I'm going to guess, for its troll armor and good 1,400 hit points. Oh, that's a good guess. <laughs> yeah, that would make some sense. And looking at the opening run from the Doge squad in the red, the replacements will be in the blue. The replacements are on the defense. Doge squad known for a little bit of comedy oh. coming from there soundboard that they had from the previous qualifier that we always enjoy. They are a bunch of silly guys, but they're pretty good at tanks. Yes, they are, and they're a constantly evolving team. It's how they describe themselves. In fact, there's only one member of the Doge squad that has been a part of the team since day one, but they were formed out of a number of Reddit clans, and the majority of players have been associated with PBKAC or Otter. They've gotten really close to qualifying a number of times, but have not made it yet. Yeah, this looks like their season, if there is one. Replacements is a a good team, I think, to measure their level of skill. You've got talented players on the battlefield. I'm seeing Jim, I'm seeing Smiley, I'm seeing Whiskey Dodd, formerly of Simple Tankers. He was, uh, I think, dropped from the team, so we'll see how he's able to perform here with these guys. Got to play with a few of them last night in some team battles. It was successful, but... I don't know if I got a good read on how well they work together. And looking at the movement now from the Doge squad, they've cut the map in half as the attackers are vying for control in one of those flag caps. Bobo up front in the IS-3, followed by Rorold. And Matsu Soul in the other IS-3 right behind. Uh, Puck Chaser stays out in the open like he is. He's taking 399 for a first shot. And more coming from Bubble Roll Roll to Matsusol. He is down to 284 hit points. One more will finish him off. That's a nice way to start the match as Doge Squad just finding one little weakness and just tearing it apart. And notice that Doge Squad is not overcommitting here for the kill. They got the necessary shots and they pulled back. Matsusol is the one that took damage. They're still waiting for a good opening to get that kill and then find out what to do next. What's behind them? That's Cod gets a shot right through the keyhole, and Whiskey Dot tries to fire back against Matsu Soul, but now he's taking damage. Down 637 hit points, trying to hang behind the ruins on that section. Smiley and Falconer from replacements are now moving for potential flank down the center line. Oh, Whiskey Dot gets himself out for another shell. This IS does not quite have enough hit points to sustain that kind of a damage or to bounce these shells. He's going to be pinched on, and Whiskey he should go down. Look at this quickly. Tiger 1. Look at Astro Punk right now behind the fountain. He has slowed this flanking maneuver, dealing significant damage to Blue Falconer as Smiley from behind did not take any hits, but that's a 5100 at half health thanks that, to this Tiger 1. That's a smart play. You can see Doge Squad is really outplaying their opponent. The head game. 
they're already winning this. Strategically, they're winning, and now the execution is going just about perfectly. Cod will go down that KV-3, but Loose Change is about dead between Bobo and Matsu's soul. He's gonna roll out looking for Rorold. Smiley may be able to help pick up one more kill, but Rorold also playing his IS-3 excellently. Housing Hippo, can't tell if he's reloading. This is why he's not in the engagement. We've seen this in the previous times where the 5100 will be out of the firefight, and that allows the rest of the team to push in, to push in and aggress. But this time, these IS-3s are doing work, and it's Agent Smith behind the train tracks he's against just, his T-29. He's just waiting, just sitting there, pulling him out. Housing Hippo moving up. Maybe he's on the reload like you talked about, but surprise. Matsu still gets the kill. Doge Squad with a wonderful execution takes battle number one. All right, that was impressive. It really was. The Tiger, I'm glad you noticed it, was in a beautiful position. And I want to take a look and see how much damage he was able to deal in that battle. Looks like 1,186, five for five. Not bad. It's good performance for a tier 7. He does a solid amount of damage. Not more than his hit points, but Matsu Soul really just wrecked face that time. IS-3 getting a shell out every time it was loaded. 390 average damage. And that left Agent Smith behind. He did fire six times, but he didn't get all his shells out. But they only lost one tank. Doge Squad played exceptionally well that time. They did everything right. The strategy alone should won them that game. Their execution made it almost a clean, clean the, sweep. The map control was so crucial. That position, that Tiger one, the type of tank that it is, it fit in that spot perfectly for that fountain. And notice he fired. I'll have to go back and check the VODs. But he fired when it was the most inconvenient time for his enemy. He fired when they were already halfway down the alley. So they were already committed to heading to that section. Forward is the best direction, but he's going to take more damage. And they're both 5100s, but that 5100 getting cut in half with its HP, it's almost out of the firefight. It almost cannot engage against those IS-3s. I am very impressed with that type of position. The question is, can they do it again? Can they do something similar again, or is this their one... Look at this trick, and yeah. then after that, it's very standard play. I also want to throw a little doubt in there. Maybe Doge Squad just happenstance picked the perfect strategy <laughs> to break that defense. It's it's possible because little bits, little differences in the way you would have seen uh, the replacements play might have changed everything. It might have just thrown all of that off to the point where it was a failure. I can't really know. That's a lot of what ifs, but I, we'll have to see in more battles if they stand up that way. This is the first time we've seen a Tiger One perform well. Yeah, I have to say in, in this in this sense and in, in this level at this level of this is why you bring a Tiger One. This is where it can fit. And the past has been theory crafted and used, but just has not been the tank that people have selected to make a difference. So let's go ahead and take a look at battle number two. What do we have for tanks? Looks like we've got two 5100s, three IS-3s, an IS, and a T-29 for the replacements. The blue team defending the attacker's Doge squad. In the red, we'll have a 110. Two 5100s, two IS-3s, that KV-3, and the Tiger-1 again. So they're switching an IS-3 in favor of a 110. A similar tank in many ways, but with slight differences. There's a 100mm cannon that it brings, which can be rather effective. Also, the front Shuka is even sharper angled. And with that, it's a good tank to lead the charge with. We'll have to see if they can use it properly, if they'll be able to employ it in that manner or if it'll make much of a difference at all. It could just go in and we could see a brawl where Doge Squad wrecks again. And here is a bit of a split coming from Doge Squad. as two tankers, Rick Owens and Rorold, and the 5100s will head up in the center line and then move to the west as Doge Squad is not going through the courtyard this time. From the southern tip, they'll be going through the courtyard on the northeastern entrance. And they'll be hugging the northern side. Replacements Sure have changed up some of the positioning of these tanks, but it's Puck Chaser still in that IS looking through the keyhole. Yeah, he's shifted slightly. He's not exposing his side to the same angle as last time. Doge Squad won't be able to exploit that in the same way. Through the keyhole, he's got an okay shot, but the IS-3 is kind of short, and I'm worried that he's going to put that shell accidentally into the dirt right in front of his gun. We'll see if he even gets a shot like that, which I doubt Doge Squad is going to provide for him. They are going for about the same strategy, about. It's a little bit different. It looks like they're holding those 5100s back this time, though. Shot fired. 
Nothing lands. Uh, replacements. This is their first real go when it comes to the Gold League qualifier. And a number of members were from other teams, such as High Voltage and then, you know, Penguin Mafia when they changed names. GLM was in Victoria's Secret. Diabetic and Puck Chaser were in Scurry Hard. Smiley used to be in Goons Ruin Everything. Banak was in Malgabai. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. <laughs> Nav 13 from Refuse to Die. Blue Falconer is the only one that has not been on another team before when it comes to replacements. Oh, no. Jim is moving up at a very inappropriate time. Could get caught out if he can't back into cover in enough time. Matsu still picks up on this. There is 660 into Matsu to start the fight. Chili Cody taking some damage, but Jim is blocked from any kind of escape, and he's going to have to go forward. Chili Coyote in the IS3 falls. Smiley is able to get that kill. Masu Sol tries to get the revenge kill against Smiley, but it's Agent Smith that is able to get it, taking down the 5100. Rural, the 5100, trying to return fire against the Blue Falconer. Takes 838 damage in that firefight. Astro Puck and the Tiger 1 wants to close the deal against that 5100. And there goes Jim. And now Blue Falconer is left alone as the flank is moving in. We've got Blue Falconer, one shell left with loose change in the back. Bolt upright has moved to support. Astro gets the shot and the kill. Bolt upright, now focused on this 5100, Rick Owens. And Astro Puck gets another kill in the Tiger 1. Loose change moves in, gets a shot onto Matsu Soul. Can Whiskey Dot follow it up? If he does, that's a chance, but no, not able to make that connection. And now we have three tanks on the eastern flank against some beat up tanks from Doge Squad. But you've still got two 5100s and a 110 at nearly full health. Beat up tanks on the corner following the 5100s, now centering their tanks around the Delta 5 section. Looking for an opening. Moving together as one. One tank will go further out. And shots fired from behind. One connects for 266. And Whiskey Dot ammo racks finishing it off. Puck Chaser and Loose Change don't have much of a chance. The two of them should go down. One shot, two shot, it's done. Doge Squad takes battle number two again in a decisive way as the attackers against the replacements. The replacements just are not able to deal with this. They, something is not happening for them. They're not clicking together enough. Something, Doge Squad is, is working better in every respect. Their brawls are going better. You're seeing some tiny mistakes. I, I feel like that's not the team working as quite a cohesive unit. When Jim moved up alone, and I was looking at that, I said, what is Jim doing and why is he doing that? And it confused me a little bit because I didn't see his, his teammates doing the same thing. And so he gets caught out. Now, replacements did go for a flank, but it was a reaction call. It wasn't the kind of thing they were prepared for, I felt, because of the timing. They came in when the fight was pretty much done. They didn't come in when it was appropriate when it would have made the difference, when it would have changed the pace and put tempo back into their control. It was just too late. I want to see how this Tiger 1 performed again. How much damage did he do? I think he's the third top earner of damage. Yes, he is third on his team, getting three kills, also dealing 1,797 damage in this battle. Solid play. Really good. Astropunk is performing well in this Tiger 1, and that's something I look forward to see in the coming battles. I really enjoyed the push from the 5100s to get behind the last stand from the replacements. They took that corner, and as the aggressors, they knew the time is obviously not on our side, and as the attackers, we still have to go for the flag cap. We can't let them defend. Replacements are in a really tough spot. If they fall back, they lose ground on the flag cap. If they split up, they're dead. If they stay where they are, they're dead. It was pretty much over. But the type of principle that was displayed that's important for us to see today that will apply to tougher teams these teams will face in Season 5 is the swift momentum of we can't engage on this section, we're going to hold here, two tanks flank, and let's pincer attack and get the kill. There's no hesitation there. No hesitation there. Battle number three. Still on Himmelsdorf, but now flipping sides for the attackers and defenders is about to begin. What do we have for tanks? For tanks, we have two 5100s, three IS-3s, an IS, and an M41 Walker Bulldog for the replacements, who are now the red team attacking. Doge Squad, who are now the defenders, the blue team on the northwest, will have that 110, two 5100s, two IS-3s, a T-32, and a KV-2. Oh, the KV-2 should be fun. Nice 152mm cannon. It's a big, slow monster. I'm looking forward to it. Should be fun. Cousin to the KV-5, that moving wall, as we call in the past. 
And that's who Seoul down the IS3. Let's check out his position. He's going to go in the defensive keyhole spot here for Doge Squad with being up two battles. They can play as defensive as they want for the rest of the series. Up to the replacements to see if they can break the defenses. Yeah. And surprising that an M41 Walker Bulldog has been picked for this. A scout on Himmelsdorf is not one of the ideal tank choices. I'm wondering what they're planning on doing with this. Because it's soft, it does deal some damage, but what's what's the goal here? What are they looking for? What is what is their win condition for this strategy that involves this Walker Bulldog? Well, jumping into the minds of the replacements and guessing that using speed to an advantage on this map where we have the heavy hitters, such as the 5100s or the IS3s. 5100s are fast enough. They can get up and go, but M41 Walker Bulldog can turn that corner before an IS3 can maybe get the beat on him. No. However, I, you're sacrificing too much by bringing this tank. Yeah, I, I think those are about the most valid points you can make for that, but the counter arguments to it are way too strong. It's, it's too soft, only has 910 hit points, and it, it doesn't bring the damage, you know? It just does not bring the damage in that we need to see from the replacements. They need more beef. They need maybe a tiger or something in there. We saw a tiger being employed by Duo Squad rather well. The replacement should look to do something of the same. It's a standstill currently for Doge Squad and the replacements. Doge Squad has all the time in the world. And in the world right now, that's five minutes and ten seconds compared to the replacements trying to make a move, trying to make a decision here. Man, they've frozen in position looking for something, but they're not close enough to their opponent. You saw how close, right up to just the edge that Doge Squad was to their opponent. They moved up to Echo 3 and Delta 4, those corners, less than 100 meters away from their opponents when they began their engagements. Do replacements aren't doing that. They're they're farther back. They've got a few tanks on Tank Alley, Jim and Bolt up right, with loose change covering the long corridor on the D-line. This is 300 meters behind where Doge Squad set up, and they would have been set up here maybe at the five minute mark. But there it is, okay. Replacements are going to begin moving forward across the D-line and across the courtyard, bringing Smiley, Blue Falcon, and Whiskey Dodd a little bit north. The trigger has been pulled. Bobo and the T-32 is gonna hang back in this keyhole position, while the rest of Doge Squad will be to the north. Looking for that first shot, that first tank to pop around a corner from the replacements. Doge Squad waiting for it, patiently. Not even moving their tanks. There's no, there's no need to move. They, they're on the defense. It's the replacement's job to begin this attack. And, well, we'll have to see what their reaction is, because that's probably the most important part, the reaction. Doge Squad still maintaining this position. Replacements have enough time, but about 3 minutes and 30 seconds. The trigger needs to be pulled soon. Matsu Sol. The point man. Look at this. Look at this potential shot. Right through here. Waiting for a tank to, to spot. Uh-huh. That's, that's a tiny little angle you can get. Okay. If you can fit a shell, that's what counts. Yeah. You're right. Still waiting for the replacements to pop out of the corner, and here they come. Shot firing, and a big hit for 359 from that Alpha Strike on the IS-3. Matsu still pulls back, not to take any damage. GLM loose change, now push up. GLM taking the brunt of the damage here. 922, and that vault, he falls. But Smiley takes that housing able from behind. Loose change could be the next one to go. The concentrated fire coming from Doge Squad. Could pick the replacements apart. Bobo and the T-32 is going to keep a number of these tanks distracted. And Smiling Loose Chains are the next ones to fall, but still some bite coming from the replacements here as Cod can be next in the KV-2. I should go down, but that long reload, maybe you could go for something else. Doesn't really matter. Got the exchanges out there. Now it is a three versus four, with Puck Chaser being one of those tanks. Mm. He has taken Bobo down quite a bit. He was giving a number of shots in the back of that T-32, but Bolt Upright. Bolt Upright goes down from Matsu Soul. Roll now pushing up against Whiskey Dog. He's going to try to body block a little bit here, then pull back, allowing the rest of his teammates to land some shots on that flank instead of trying to out-brawl him. Let the rest of your team do the damage. Roll, roll now pushes up and tries to use Whiskey Dog as a shield against Puck Chaser. 
Ah, not bad. Puck Chaser attempts to pen the front of the IS-3. Not successful. And now he's just going to try and run away and kite this out. He's got to do, let's see, 1,500, 1,093, and 909 hit points. That is way out of his potential in that amount of time. Yeah, I don't think he can do that unless he gets ammo racks and lights tanks on fire. Unless he's able to do that, I think uh, a minute, 22 seconds is actually not possible. Here's Matsu Soul again in this keyhole position, waiting for Puck Chaser to show up. Puck Chaser whipping around those corners as I talked about before, Randall. The IS-3s can't get the beat on him in time. I guess. That's this, why they brought him. In this situation, yeah, you called it. I didn't think that... Uh, I did not think Doge Squad would have that much trouble making the shot on an M41. He's quick around the corner, and here God. comes Puck Chaser again, but yeah. Agent Smith was ready along with his teammate, 668 in that volley. Puck Chaser, and oh, now he stopped. Don't stop, Puck Chaser. He goes down. Doge Squad is now up 3-0 to zero against the replacements. Again, more impressive play. I like the positioning from the T32 as well. Yeah, I really did. Uh, the M41, again, not the strongest choice, I think, for this map. It didn't really lend much to it. In the end, he does do 1,055 damage, but really didn't contribute as much. He didn't soak hit points and wasn't able to contribute in other factors, which heavy tanks, I think, would have been a better choice. Did fine otherwise, but you can see how everything fell apart. Jim just gets one shell off in that fight before going down. Mm. You need to have more damage to follow that up. You need that mob of tanks to come in. And Smiley, I have to point out that I really liked his play. You saw him come in from the south in the flank. Yep. The timing was strong. You saw him move in and get plenty of damage on numerous tanks. And he may have been the most appropriate one to call who to focus because he's sitting there looking at the back of all this, able to identify the most vulnerable targets, which are the highest priority, and tell that to the rest of these tanks who are just streaming in with all sorts of smoke and other tanks in the way, this mob of, of steel. Doge are already celebrating a little bit right now. We're told by one of our correspondents that he's already talking about, they're already talking about maps for tomorrow. And <laughs> they're going to line up for maps for tomorrow. A little bit uh, celebratory at the beginning here, Doge Squad. You don't want to get too ahead of yourselves. You still have two more victories to get through in order to take this. And we've seen it in the past. Teams be ahead with one battle left to secure, or two battles left to secure a victory, and then the enemy team coming back and getting the win. The. Same map, Himmelsdorf, for one more battle. We move into battle number four. After that, it will be on steps, which is a choice of replacements. Himmelsdorf has really gone to Doge so far. And defensively, you try to think of how do you break their defenses. I think one of the things uh, I would like to test out, at least that I, what I'm seeing, is IS-3s are training. like It's one, one, one right behind each other instead of more flared out to share the HP, but also to be a little bit more aggressive in their movement. You're talking about the column of attack? The col yeah, the column of attack. Um, well, so the thing about a tank column mm -hmm. is that if you're heading into an enemy territory and they're on both sides, one, you don't know which way you're going to go until you figure out which side the enemy's on that's the weakest, and two, you can't fire what's in front of you if your teammate's in front. So s stormtroopers, sand people kind of thing, <laughs> right? A little bit. Uh, it's it's also the type of engagement you want to bring, and when somebody slows down when they take a first hit instead of moving forward. All sorts of things when it comes to moving in a tank column. Let's move on to battle number four. And Himmelsdorf, what do we have for tanks? All right. 5100, four IS-3s, an IS, and an M41. That's the replacements of the attackers. They've still got that light tank. I don't know why they're picking this, and I don't predict it working. Doge Squad, 110, two 5100s, two IS-3s, T-29, and the Tiger-1. Solid lineup. I think they decided the KV-2, while funny, was not as effective as they would have liked. Seeing the same positions coming out of the Doge squad defensively, Matsu Soul's going to take this spot once again. That proved to be quite the defensive and place, and also surprise for the replacements that came around that corner. Con the T-29. Sorry, Josh, take a look at this. Is this what you're talking about, that column? Yeah, what I mean by this is if Blue Falconer takes a hit and then stops, you've already, you've now lost momentum, you've lost you've lost return fire, and now the two tanks behind you have to find cover. Yes. And, and that is why you keep a safe distance, just like driving on the highway, so you can get out of the way. Two second rule. Yep, two second rule. And on top of that, I prefer slightly more staggered. When going around a corner, the same way that you've seen tanks stack up, 
And I think you might be able to find this example over where... Who is that? Row Rolled is. Maybe? Kind of. You see that with Housing Hippo and Astropunk. The two of them kind of stacked up a little bit. You just put a few tanks in between. All of you have your own path you're going to go along. Yes. If someone gets tracked, they may turn a little bit, but you can adjust and go around that. And so, everyone comes around at the same time. It's a wider angle, but mm -hmm. yeah, you're there at the same time. You're attacking at the same time. You're in their face at the same time instead of you know shooting fish in a barrel one fish at a time. So, oh, yeah. it comes to the surface, blow it up. Yeah. The, I used to practice a maneuver when I played heavy tanks on city maps because I wouldn't play a scout or anything in the format. And I haven't really seen this executed on because it is a little bit complicated to try and just execute. But a few of us got together in T32s when we thought those were the coolest tank for the format, not IS-3s. And we would go around the corner in such a way that we would take the widest tank and he would actually take the shortest path to the target. The closest tank would take the wide path and the middle tank would kind of go in between so that you had this really kind of elegant little shift. It was, it was a be most efficient movement thing, but no one really bothers with that because there's almost no point when you actually get into the engagement. It's also how we, it's what we say to our friend Charles, you got to stay in your lane. Stay in your lane. You stay in your lane. Astro Puck and the Tiger One housing Hippo. Waiting for the engagement coming from the replacements here is Matsu Soul in the IS-3 waiting again in this perfect position in this call it hold down, call it keyhole, call it magic. Call whatever you want. It's effective. So Matsu Soul's waiting. And here comes the trigger. Matsu Soul fires and will pull back as here comes. Oh, Smiley gets unloaded upon in the 5100. He's the first to fall. But the replacements, instead of focusing on Matsu Soul, now push up and they stop right in this column, right in this corridor. And this is what I was talking about, Randall. They're in a terrible position. Yeah, and they are just going down one by one. Loose Change and Jim have some kind of cover, but Matsu Soul's got side shots and they're not giving him the attention he deserves. There's a little pressure on the cap. I think that, and Whiskey Dodd back there with Puck Chaser trying to do that, but I don't feel this is going to be successful. Jim and Loose Change couldn't possibly hold this off for long enough to see a victory. And there he goes, Jim, around that corner, firing a couple shots back. But here comes Matsu Soul pushing up along the keyhole. Big bounce on the front of the tank, and he backs up. And Jim, Jim needed to stay forward. If he could have kept the attention of Doge Squad, there's a possibility of a cap, but not anymore. It's pretty much falling apart at this point. Whiskey is down. Jim isn't even a concern of the Doge Squad. They're just going to start pushing him. Agent there's Smith is having fun at this point. Walker Bulldog trying to escape. Jim fires towards Bobo. Puck takes a hit, two hits. Jim almost down. He falls. Housing waits for it, waits for it, waits for it, and allows Agent Smith to push forward Aww. and gets a kill in the 110. Doge Squad is now up 4-0 to zero against the replacements as we move on into the next map, Steps. Yeah. Uh, with a performance like Himmelsdorf, I am worried about Steps, but the replacements are the team that picked Steps. So maybe they have something ready for this. Maybe it fits their play style better. Maybe city maps like Himmelsdorf are their weakness right now, and they're looking for something else to do, something more light tank oriented. More we've, got, we've got light tank players that I recognize on the team, people who I wouldn't necessarily associate with tanks like the IS or IS-3 or 5100 and high levels of performance in those. We, yeah, you could say the same thing for teams that we've seen in the Gold League in the yeah. past. They would prefer more the light tanks, the open battlefield, simple tankers comes to mind every single time, of course, especially yeah. on maps like Pearl Horovka. But Steps, this was the map that I always wanted to see Artie on first, but it became actually uh, Morobanka that we yeah. got to see in the previous engagement. But th this is kind of the same scenario. You have a little bit of peaks and valleys where tanks, especially next to that eastern valley, can be behind that cover, can get in great hold down positions, but can utterly be annihilated, at least in that coverage, because of Artie placement, Artie yeah. fire. And well, I, I would like to see that. We'll have to see if they bring Artie. We did see it in the last one. Voltage was able to play Artie pretty well. But do, do the replacements or Doge Squad have an artillery player like that? Someone who's going to have the tank and know how to play it, have the crew skills, have everything set up just right, and be able to execute. Because one of the big things is if you bring an arty player, that is a lot of trust in that single player's ability to perform. Now, good scout and good support will allow him to perform better, but that arty player needs to make his hits. And yeah. Artie isn't the most reliable tank. Some days you are just going to get bad RNG, 
and your shots are not going to hit where they need to. It's really tough when things are completely out of your control with that RNG, but the factor remains the presence, the threat, the continual. This fire is coming from above. We can't sit in the same position. We need to move. That adds tension to your enemy. And if you can add tension forcing your enemy, if you can control the behavior of your enemy, you've won half the battle. Yeah. And that's what Artie can do. Just it's tough because it's one of those make it or break it type tanks. Yeah, it's setting the tempo, setting control. And if we do see an Artie, I'm going to be looking for who's going to be looking out for that Artie. Who's going to be getting targets for him and making sure they stay lit long enough for him to zero the shot as he wants and place it exactly as he needs to to increase the probability of that shell connecting with a target. Looking forward to this matchup. As we'll see a different map, maybe a different mentality and result coming from the replacements, but the Doge squad is currently up 4-0 to zero against their opponents. What do we have for tanks, Randall? All right, looks like the replacements, the defenders, the blue team, will be bringing three T-32s, two Pershings, and two M41 Walker Bulldogs. That is a very defensive lineup primed for hull down tactics. However, maybe a little weak to this opponent's lineup. Doge Squad has brought three, three T-32s, a Pershing, T-69, a GW Panther, and an M41 Bulldog. I like it, Cod. I like it a lot. I want to see how this is going to be used, especially on the attacker side, I believe. Yes, a GW Panther on the side of the Doge Squad who will be attacking. What's very important with this lineup, though, is Agent Smith is the one and only active scout. Everyone else is going to have to get into hull downs and attempt to spot things in that manner. T-32s could do that kind of a slow roll where they find a hull down, prime up against another T-32 and play that game while well, Artie supports. But the counter from Puck and Whiskey Dodd will mean that these Walker Bulldogs can begin playing around. So first shot. Oh, wow. 507 damage onto Whiskey Dot. What? Perfect prediction. Whiskey is not doing the evasive action that he needed to that do. That had to be a blind work. shot. They still have not even seen the the damage being spotted on Whiskey Dot coming no from Kong. They, they had to have seen that. There's no way they were not able to see that. That was way too accurate. Uh, I think Puck and Whiskey were spotted through the little crevice right there where you see the Pershing coming in now enough, from Doge Squad. I mean, the presence of the Doge Squad now pushing up to the rest of the replacements. The replacements are trying to scramble. Whiskey Dodd is halfway out of the fight than M41 Walker Bulldog. He's going to have to get around to a flank and get the Artie because once Doge Squad gets into position and all of their tanks are verified, then the replacements need to get the flank. They need to get one of those Walker Bulldogs into the backfield and get rid of Cod because he is going to deal incredible amounts of damage if given the opportunity. And here's that hold down position on both sides. These T-32 is able to land a hit against loose change. And this is a perfect scenario for an RD player. Look at how these tanks are grouping up. Continual fire from COD will put pressure on the replacements to refine their tactics, to move, to reconnoiter, to change every minute. And that's going to allow Doge Squad more flexibility to aggress towards them. Five minutes left in the map. And the next shell should come somewhere into perhaps Smiley and Loose Change. Smiley takes a hit for 495. Uh, that would be it. Look at the way they're clustered. Loose Change and Smiley in relation to that RD piece. He is now in Kilo Zero, so directly south. His reticle, his his oval for his where his shells will be landing is going to be long as opposed to wide. So tanks grouping up behind each other. If Diabetic is behind Bolt Upright and they're both facing south, then you're going to have a better chance of getting that connection. Now, Diabetic and Bolt Upright move forward at the exact right moment. They were exposed for just a second, but Cod not quite able to get that. He does have the opportunity, I think, with Loose Change. He seems like a very easy target. There's not too much hill in the way. He should be the next one to take a hit from Cod. These are where things are getting a little bit dicey here. Replacements are now sending two of their tanks, both the M41 Walker Bulldogs, down the No Man's Road. Agent Smith and Housing Hippo have left their position to the south, and now Cod. Oh, loose change taking 590 damage. Nice splash from Cod. Going to track him in the open after taking one hit from a T32. That's going to loosen them up. Back to those light tanks, though, Josh. Puck Chaser and Whiskey have now turned the corner. Agent Smith and the Walker Bulldog is able to see them, but Cod is in a very exposed position to these two tanks. He lands a hit against the Walker Bulldog, Whiskey Dog. Lands another one. Can he get the final shot and the kill? Can't get it. Bounces off the front of the tank. Agent Smith's in trouble. He's going to leave that position, but both the 40 
ones, the M41, Walker Bulldogs, Whiskey Dot and Puck Chaser, able to get that kill, leaving their already exposed. Now this is the disadvantage of having this type of play, is if your opening is exploited, such as the replacements have done, it's ticking time away on the battlefield. And this will be a win for the replacements if the clock goes to zero. There we go. Looks like Whiskey's even going to be able to make it out with a sliver of health. And that's going to slow things down. The replacements can now come back in as soon as any pressure goes north and take out that artillery piece. But another big hit. 619 against Bolt Upright in the T-32. Oh. Look at the amount of damage against the replacements. Doge Squad can push in and clean up. Two minutes and 45 seconds left. Matsu Soul and the Pershing will be the first one to push up. Dodges a shot from Jim in the T-32. And as he peeks up on this side in a closer hold down position, Cod can continue to send these shots into the replacements. And now housing Hippo moving to screen, Bobo moving to screen. We're going to have three sitting on cap. Cod to deal with anyone who's a very dangerous threat. I'm expecting one Artie shell to come in. Matt still takes out Bolt upright as light tanks are coming in to stop the cap. And here comes Buck Chaser. And that Bulldog gets behind Matsu Soul and gets the kill. And now the T32 has to focus on Whiskey Dot and then Puck next. Puck has serious amounts of HP, and he'll be a very big thorn in the side of the Doge Squad. They're getting closer to the replacements who have. Oh, big shot from the Artie! Able to do two, 426 damage and a little bit of splash damage to Jim the T32. Chili tries to line up a shot against Puck, can't get it yet. But there goes Diabetic. Now Jim is left alone with Puck attempting to get out. Focus from Bobo and Chili onto the Walker Bulldog. Do not connect. He's going to actually be able to get away for a little bit. And with a minute and 30 seconds, if Jim is able to deal some good damage, delay this inevitable cap, we could see the replacements cinch out a little bit of a win here. Puck's going to need to kill Artie, come back, use the holdouts properly, and then he will have success. But with Artie still alive, it's a very difficult problem. Yeah. Puck, the last one alive here for the replacements. The last chance for the replacements to stay in this series. Doge Squad needs to take this tank down in order to make it to the semifinals tomorrow. Puck Chaser now inching closer towards what remains of the threat on the flag cap with 20 seconds left for Doge Squad to get the victory. And they're all looking the right way. Rick Owens is on one corner, Bobo on another part of a hill, and Chili right in the middle. Puck is going to attempt to go around to the side and flank. And tries to get the reset. Shot fires, but does not penetrate. Return fire from Rick Owens. Three seconds left. Shot Puck Chaser top. has to get this. He has to get the reset. He can't. Bobo gets the kill and the victory for Doge Squad. They take the series 5-0 to zero in another shutout. Doge Squad moves on to the semifinals tomorrow. We have had two shutouts tonight, and you can see both teams really just outplaying their opponent. Voltage versus Elevate. Voltage a different class. Now Doge Squad versus the replacements, and Doge Squad's talking about the maps for tomorrow, apparently in the <laughs> middle of this. They feel that confident, and I've seen less one-sided matches that felt easy. Well, easy, relative term. Yes. Easy in the sense of, do they have control? Yes. Look at the damage that COD did. Let's look up how much damage this RDP did on two hits. Two hits. And six splash damage, 2,428 damage. That is the difference between trying to dance back and forth in these hold down positions and then having such secured firepower towards the spawn point of your map and raining hell upon your enemy. Yeah, we, we saw a situation where the replacements had a tank lineup which allowed them some flexibility and a strong defense. Their opponent had an artillery piece, which is one less tank with heavy armor and the ability to fend for itself very well. Now the GW, as far as artillery goes, I consider it one of the most capable of defending itself. So there is that. It does have that. And COD running up against a single M41 may have been able to take it on. But two of them going in might have been worth it to get that kill and take that artillery out of the equation early on, making it a hold down fight between T-32s, Pershings, and T-69s. I think that would have made it much, much easier for the replacements to maybe defend this one. Steps is a hard map to attack on, especially with a, a slow, just incredibly non-flexible lineup like mm -hmm. that. You have to find a position, stop, and begin an engagement with artillery support. Artillery support was what was what softened their opponent up and allowed them to win. 
That's all you have to do. <laughs> Soften your opponent and then win in certain ways at certain times, though. And it's also knowing when to press and when to attack. If you think you have what it takes to play in the WGLNA in the Gold League, well, unfortunately, the qualifiers are closed for the Gold League, but you can sign up for the Silver or Bronze League. All you have to go, all you have to do is go to worldoftanks.com slash UC slash tournaments. You'll see down below the registration for bronze and silver. Registration is open from December 1st to December 6th, I believe. Yes. And the top teams will earn a spot in the WGLNA Silver League. In the Silver League, teams will compete for 40k gold and a chance to take home a tight 59 for their accounts. They do not sell those anymore, guys. They do are not. very valuable. Very, very, very valuable. Some of these teams, you know, kind of jokingly said, hey, we want to make it to the Gold League, but we also kind of want to stay in the Silver League because we could win a tight 59. Teams can also qualify for the Bronze League and the chance to earn 20K gold. Teams that qualify for the Silver League uh, will have that tight 59, but uh, the Bronze League, I don't believe so. I believe it's only the Silver League for that. We'll tell you guys again about the qualifiers at the end of the night tonight, but put a team together. You need seven players. Ten can be on your roster total, but you need seven.